<laughs> Sorry, the interpreter loves dogs. <laughs> This is my first service dog. He's two and a half. And the dog's name is Norman. Brian Aulis has been dealing with the struggles we have all felt during this pandemic. The difference is Aulis is doing it while also being part of the deafblind community, making tasks like picking up groceries while also socially distancing infinitely more difficult. For deafblind people being tactile, uh, we value the sense of touch because we need to pick things up and look at them closely when we're even buying food to know when the expiry date is and if it's still good. As William Thornton, CEO of BC and Alberta Guide Dogs, explains, guide dogs are taught to meet specific targets, and that target in all likelihood is not meeting the two meters apart distancing rule. Guide dogs have not been taught social distancing. Who would have thought we were going to have social distancing? And maybe moving forward, we might want to teach something about social distancing. At the moment, the way guide dogs are taught is they're taught to find targets. And the target could be to pause at the door before it opens, say, on a SkyTrain, to position you so that you can uh, egress out of the SkyTrain safely and in a timely way so the door doesn't close on you or what have you. I can tell you now, if a guide dog sees a gap, it's going to be like a good NFL football player. If he sees a gap, he's going to take that gap, and that's going to be perceived as um, a negative behavior, I think, in the positive, in, in the, in the, under the COVID-19 circumstance. I mean, I'm kind of lucky because I'm legally blind, but I have a little bit of vision. So, you know, um, I can give the dog some direction. And I also think that people notice when you have a dog that you are blind, so they're more respectful and they help me to have that space, you know? A born and raised Vancouverite, Ryan Aulis hopes to spread awareness of the needs of the deaf, blind, and deaf community, and does so through teaching ASL at UBC and providing workshops in pro tactile communication. He feels now is an incredibly important time to be cognizant of those around us. I can't speak on behalf of everyone, but I can say that it is frustrating for anyone who has both a hearing loss and visual loss. Um, to communicate and so just for people to be patient would be awesome and for people to not make assumptions about you know a person who's blind that they can speak necessarily in u.s minster ashley burr city news